Welcome to the Sant Mat Satsang Podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Seeing heaven now during this life. Up first, a definition or two of a couple of words that we will encounter during the next half hour. Nam means, or nam, the term nam is referring to sound current, synonymous with Shabad, the audible life stream, logos, word, dun, the divine sound. Also, name, as in the mantra or words given to initiates during the time of initiation or nam dan. So the term nam can refer to the audible life stream, the inner sound, the divine sound current, music of the spheres. It has been given many names in the various cultures of the world. Song of the Creator in the indigenous traditions. Song lines, according to the Australian Aborigines. The Om of the Hindus, and so on. The divine sound. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the sound. In the beginning was the Tao. In the beginning was the Shabbat. But Nam can also refer to sacred names of God given to initiates of Santmat at the time of initiation. Nam Dan. And there's a further definition here of Nam Dan. Initiation into Surat Shabbat Yoga, inner light and sound meditation by a living master, connecting the soul with the inner sound current, the power of Nam or Shabbat, the sound. Having defined Nam and Nam Dan, and mentioning a bit about the sound of the Creator, the sound of the spheres, the cosmic music of the heavens, we begin. This is titled, A Journey to the Stars. Once Darshan Singh, son of Sadar Kripal Singh, when five years old, went to Hazur Baba Sawan Singh and requested that he be blessed with Nam, initiation into the path of spirituality. Hazur said, All right, I shall give a very sweet Nam. He then called for some sweets and gave the same to him. The child would not have any of them and said, Sir, I do not want sweets. Kindly give me that Nam which my father practices. Hazur agreed. In the afternoon, he asked the child to sit before him and bade him to close his eyes and see within and tell him what he saw. The child did as directed and said, I see light in the firmament. I am crossing the sky. As the child was proceeding on the inner plane, Hazur said, What do you see now? The child said, Stars. Hazur smiled and said, This is sufficient for you at this stage. Unquote. After the child had got this spiritual experience, he ran straight to his father and said, Father, Father, I have got initiation up to the stars. How far have you got it? This is just one example of Hazur's unbounded grace. A story about the initiation or an early stage of initiation by Darshan Singh, given initiation by Huzur Baba Sawan Singh, to be found in a very rare book called The Beloved Master. Hope you enjoyed that. The child said, Stars, I see stars. I see light in the firmament. I am crossing the sky. Journey to the stars. quote from St. Isaac the Syrian from Spiritual Works, translated by Mary Hansberry. 
by stillness of the body and ceasing from this world, by means of the mind, the solitaries are united with the world of the spirit. By means of meditation, they are involved in the expanse above. This is a saying attributed to Jesus found in the Gospel of the Hebrews. Even so did my mother, the Holy Spirit, take me by one of my hairs and carry me away to the great mountain Tabor. Unquote. The following is a reading from the Book of the Odes. I recently did a program on the Book of the Odes, and I thought I would include a couple of odes in today's Satsang Discourse. This is from a very fine translation, the Book of the Odes, by Michael Ladke. The Spirit of the Lord rested upon me, and she lifted me up to the height, and set me on my feet in the height of the Lord before his pleroma, or fullness, and his glory. The term pleroma, or fullness, is another term for heaven, or one of the high heavens. Back to the odes. While I gave praise by the composition of his odes, she, the Spirit, brought me forth before the face of the Lord. And although I was a son of man, I was called the Shining One, the Son of God, while I was gloriously among the glorious and was great among the great. For according to the greatness of the Most High, so she made me, and according to his renewal, he renewed me, and he anointed me from his perfection. This like that reference in the Gospel of the Hebrews, is speaking of the Holy Spirit in feminine terms and describes the Spirit as causing the ascension of, in this case, Christ, to the pleroma, or the fullness, the high heavens. And this is providing us with some key spiritual principles of course, Holy Spirit or Spirit in Hebrew and Aramaic is feminine in gender, so that's why the Spirit is referred to as she in these passages from the early days of the original Jesus movement. The term pleroma, as I mentioned, refers to the highest of heavens, the true heaven. And this ascension of the soul was an act of divine grace that simply uplifted the soul. It's a matter of grace more than works or extreme discipline or effort. It was simply an act of divine grace that caused this ascension of the soul. And while I'm here, another passage from the Book of the Odes. This is from Ode 32. The blessed have joy from their heart and light from him who dwells in them and the word from that truth, which was her own self. Because truth became strong by the power of the Most High, she is also unshakable forever and ever. Ode 32. I especially like the first verse of this. The blessed have joy from their heart and light from him who dwells in them. Well, we're here looking at early Christian writings before we get it Get, we get back to saint Mont sources. This is from the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. 
I left the world with the aid of another world. The design was erased by virtue of a higher design. Henceforth I travel toward repose, where time rests in the eternity of time. I go now into silence. Having said this, Mary became silent, for it was in silence that the teacher spoke to her. Gospel of Mary Magdalene. Also containing spiritual principles that this high spiritual region or state of consciousness can be characterized as repose. Other texts describe it as heavenly rest, as being the destination. Repose and rest are also terms for the high heaven like pleroma or fullness in these mystical traditions. So, inner peace, a sense of bliss or ananda, peace, is very much part of the experience of meditation and the ascension of the soul. Or even listening to the satsang discourses of a living master, there's just a, a nurturing sense of peace and serenity, restfulness, repose, oasis, sanctuary from the world of agitation, a pure peace, and a soul that embodies pure peace is referred to in the Sant tradition of India as a Sant and is related to the term Shanti that you'll find in the Upanishads. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. That word peace there in ancient Sanskrit relates to the definition of a Sant, a soul that is the embodiment of peace or to use the language of the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, repose. In the beginning was the Word, in the beginning was the sound, in the beginning was the Tao, in the beginning was the song of creation, in the beginning was the audible life stream. The upward call the sound or divine voice coming from above, summoning souls to awakening. That's a classic theme of the saints and mystics and scriptures. Back briefly to the Book of the Odes. In two different translations, this first one comes from the James H. Charlesworth translation of the Book of the Odes, known as the Odes of Solomon. And he stood on the peak of a summit and cried aloud from one end of the earth to the other. Then he drew to him all those who obeyed him. The Ladki translation of the Odes renders it this way. And he stood on a high peak and sent out his voice from the ends of the earth to its ends. And he drew to him all those who obeyed him. I especially like the Ladki translation from the Syriac Aramaic because it describes this voice, this divine voice calling out. And some hear that divine voice and follow it. And that is the upward call, a classic theme of Gnostics and mystics and masters, hearing that divine voice and responding, becoming awakened and following where that sound leads. The person who is in tune with the universe becomes like a radio receiver through which the voice of the universe is transmitted. That's a passage from Hazrat Anayat Khan. Also from Hazrat Anayat Khan, the Sufi, the vibrations of this sound are too fine to be either audible or visible to the material eyes or ears. Hazard Khan. 
Yet the masters and mystics often point out there is another kind of hearing and another kind of seeing, the eyes and ears of the soul. Nairat and Surat. Spiritual seeing and spiritual hearing. The spiritual senses. And they can be developed. There is light coming from beyond the darkness, and there is music coming from beyond the silence. For those who have ears to hear, so to speak, so to say, for those who desire to meditate and discover the wonders of inner space for themselves. As Rumi once said, rise above thy mental horizon, O brave soul, and listen to the call of music coming from above. Bring the sky beneath your feet and listen to celestial music everywhere, says Rumi. This is a passage from Pam Reynolds, a famous near-death experiencer. Those who have had near-death experiences or NDEs sometimes report hearing inner sound. Pam Reynolds once said, The next thing I recall was the sound. It was a natural D. As I listened to the sound, I felt it was pulling me out of the top of my head. The further out of my body I got, the more clear the tone became. I had the impression it was like a road, a frequency that you go on, unquote, like a frequency you travel upon. And that's exactly right. That's a great definition of Surat Shabd Yoga, provided to us by Pam Reynolds, one of the great famous... NDE experiencers, one of the most famous cases of a near-death experience, that of Pam Reynolds. Sarvachan Radhaswami Poetry Radhaswami calls out to souls to perform spiritual practices of Ascending to the original abode. Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry of Swamiji. Describing that same process, that process of the divine calling out to souls. Calling out to the divine. That is within souls scattered throughout space and time. Somewhere in time. This is from the Anurag Sagar, Kabir's Ocean of Love. Some heavyweight quotes coming your way on today's Santmat Satsang podcast. Says Kabir O Dharam Das, if a person gives up all doubts, meditates regularly on Nam, imparted by the Master, and behaves in the manner the saints behave and follows in their footsteps. That is, he or she listens to the sound current within. Then he or she can tread the path of saints in search of the highest truth. There is a sound current coming from the final abode, and it's calling you to come. So if you listen to that call, then you can ascend like saints. A quote from the Anurag Sagar, Kabir's Ocean of Love. A key Santma text, studied for many centuries in India. A book that I describe as the most Gnostic scripture of India. Authored by Dharm Das, or one of his successors long ago. Studied in the Kabir line of masters, and studied by Sant. Darya Sahib of Bihar and Tulsi Sahib and the Radha Swami masters and remains in circulation and still is highly valued in the Sant tradition of India as a key foundational text 
a kind of gospel of Kabir, gospel of Santmat, describing the divine call, the sound current emanating from the final abode, calling us to ascend. This is from The Inner Journey of the Soul Back to Its Origin by George Arnsby Jones. The essence of the mystical path of love is this. For the mystic adepts have said that love is the supreme power in these holy regions. When asked about Anami Lok, the nameless realm, Swamiji said simply, it is all love. Thus, on the mystical path of love, the combination of the mystic adept and the Shabbat, the divine sound, lead to the liberation of the soul, or Jiva Mukti, and the ascension of the soul to its true home, if the spiritual aspirant faithfully fulfills the mystic adept's commandments, if he lives completely the way of love, this spiritual liberation may be completed as soon as in one lifetime. The aspirant will hear the continuous symphony of love, the supernal music of the spheres, and will realize that his true self and the divine word is of one and the same essence. The music is so glorious that the chattering of the unregenerate mind is stilled and the focus of the soul is absorbed completely within the audible life stream and is thereby drawn upwards beyond the planes of mind and matter. Once again, the upward call, the summoning to awakening by the divine sound. A sound from beyond time and space, busting into worlds of time and space to provide divine grace to souls, to grab them by metaphorically, their hair, and helping to bring them up, pull them up to the fullness, the pleroma, the abode of the Supreme Being in the high heavens. George Arnsby Jones, as the aspirant rises into the higher realms of life, he discovers that this is indeed the only true freedom to which a human being can aspire. It is the freedom from bondage to his lower self. The fears, fantasies, hatreds, pref preferences, and dreams which haunt him as he walks the long road of reoccurring births and deaths. Man individually and collectively can never be truly free on the physical plane of existence, only the individual who has attained higher spiritual consciousness, fulfilling his birthright, has attained freedom in the most complete sense of the word. The liberated soul may never again be enslaved by the false appetites of the lower self or by the mechanizations of those who believe that they can control the transient world of man by virtue of their own temporal power. The machinations of those who believe that they control the transient world of man by virtue of their own temporal power. Spiritual consciousness is both the reason and the summit of man's evolution and its nature is beyond words, which are merely invented symbols of human idolation. For it is a truly wordless and timeless state of beatitude. 
He who has attained this spiritual consciousness knows at the very center of his being that he is a free spirit living in the eternal realms of spiritual liberation. He has risen. He has risen on that celestial symphony of the spirit as Guru Nanak has reiterated in the Japji, the morning prayer of Guru Nanak. By practice of the word, one rises to universal consciousness and develops right understanding. By practice of the word, one develops clairvoyance and transvision of the whole creation. Clairvoyance and transvision of the whole creation. By practice of the word, one is freed from sorrow and suffering, says Guru Nanak in the Japji. By practice of the word. Verses from the Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry of Swamiji Maharaj on the ascension of the soul through the heavens, excerpts and selections on the theme of ascension. Those who did not ascend to higher regions by means of Shabad, the sound current, have wasted their life. I wish I may ascend and rush to thee with my surat, my inner hearing, and nairat, inner seeing. I shall so attach myself to thee that I may never be separated. Shabd is constantly resounding, a prayer found in the Sarbachan poetry. You find that quite often in the Sant poetry, Adi Granth or Sarbachan, Tukaram, Paltu Sahib. You know, there's mystic poetry and hymns, and then all of a sudden there's a spontaneous prayer embedded right in the middle of that. It flips to a prayer and then flips back to mystic poetry. That's very common in the literature of the Sants. Prayer is embedded in the, in the Psalms, in the Odes, in the mystic poetry of all of these glorious hymns. The majestic grandeur of the Satguru is indescribable. Anhad Shabbat is resounding within. The drop or spirit entity, the soul, leaves pinned, pindadesh, the material realm, the unreal world, and ascends higher and reaches the ocean of the refulgence of Sat, or truth, called Hak by the Sufis. When I hear thunder in the mystic sky of Trikuti, my yearning is awakened, and the coward mind becomes brave and courageous. Ascending higher and higher, surat, the inner hearing faculty of the soul, and nairat, the inner seeing faculty, are now getting awakened. The stream of love and yearning is swelling within me. Surat and nairat are ascending higher and higher every day. By the support of Radha, my mind is subdued. By the strength of Swami, I ascend to higher regions. Radha Swami has showered immense kindness on me. In the Primbani Radha Swami and Sarbachan, the Radha Swami literature, it is once again divine grace that does most of the work. I mean, one has to be willing to set themselves down and meditate. One has to be willing to do Simran, the repetition of the sacred names, to focus and refocus and focus again again and again, but really it's divine grace, you know, fly the kite, but the wind is going to do the lifting. The kite of the soul is available for the wind to take it. The winds of grace do the lifting, the ascending. 
more from the Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry. I ascended to Sahazdal Kanwal, the thousand petaled lotus and Trikuti, and then opened Daswan Dwar, the tenth door. Beyond soon the great dark void, I came across the darkness of Mahasun, the great dark void, the great great dark void. And then I saw light in Banwar Gufa, the swirling vortex cave. Banwar Gufa, I had Darshan of Sat Purush. In this realm of Banwar Gufa, I had vision of the Supreme Being and attained the fourth pod or loka. I went to Alak and Agem and sacrificed my body and mind before them. Both Surat and Nairat moved onward and arrived at Nijdam, the true and real abode, and found the essence of all essences. Achieving purification and stillness of mind, ascend to the mystic sky by the path of the sound current, the path of the Shabbat. Practicing Shabd Yoga is the only real activity. Shabd will lift you to Daswandwar, the void. I enter the crooked tunnel and then ascend to Trikuti. Ascend to Soon. Go on ascending step by step by the practice of Shabd, by practice of the sound current and reach Satnam Sachkhand, the true original name, the true eternal region, Satnam Sachkhand. You will give up all pleasures and become detached from the world. You will ascend and hear a deep sound. When Guru Bhakti, devotion to the Master, is perfected, your Surat, the attention faculty of the soul, will ascend to higher regions. I majestically enter the palace of Banwar Gufa. Ascending to Satlok, the true timeless realm, I announce loudly my arrival there. In Alak Lok, my surat is befittingly adorned. I will ascend to the inaccessible mansion of Agam. I will not reveal the mysteries of that region, says Swamiji Maharaj. In a moment I run to Agem Lok. How shall I describe the grandeur of the throne of flowers whereon Radhaswami, the Lord of the soul, has placed his holy feet? I move forward and stick fast to his holy feet. How should I describe the indescribable? Radhaswami has granted me a state of ecstasy, becoming the dust of his holy feet. I have ascended high. Spiritual link being established, I ascend higher and higher. My mind is in high spirits at the prospect of uttering the holy name Radhaswami. Immense joy and bliss have filled my heart. My attention is riveted to the holy feet of the Master. I got Darshan, a vision of Master, and sang his glory. His peerless countenance has settled in my eyes. The sun of love has risen within me and has dispelled the darkness of illusions and delusions. My good fortune has awakened that I have contacted the unhad shab, the unstruck melody, and have bathed in the current of Sukmani and have thus performed pilgrimage internally, says Swamiji. I have turned the pupils of my eyes towards the thousand-petaled lotus, Sahaz Dal Kanwal. Giving up the company of mind, I rushed upward with Surat, the attention faculty of the soul, defining these terms along the way as we go from verse to verse. 
I fail to describe the great happiness I experienced on beholding Jyoti and Naranjan, the light and the Lord, or Lord of Light. I heard the sounds of the bell and the conch, and saw suns, moons, and stars. I opened the door to the crooked tunnel, Banknal, and descended to Trikuti, and there came in contact with the Master's word, the Guru's Shabad. Trikuti is the region of the sun. It is the origin and source of the Vedas, the Hindu scriptures. The name of its deity has the quantity of half a short syllable, i.e., its deity is Om or Umkar Parush. On ascending to Sun, the great void, I heard the sound of Raran, Kal and Maya, time and illusion, both were subdued. Here I beheld the fully shining white moon and drank Amrit, nectar from the lake of nectar. I developed friendship with Hansas, birds of heaven, heavenly birds, heavenly beings, souls, and heard the incessant sounds of the Kingri, an Indian bowed string instrument, and the Sarangi, a kind of fiddle or violin used in Indian classical music. I perceived hidden sounds in Mahasun, the great dark void, and Mahakal, the great call, became helpless. I enjoyed showers of amrit or nectar in Banwar Gufa, the swirling vortex cave, and heard sounds of Sohang and Bansuri flute. My surat ascended and addressed Sat Purush. I took my seat in Sach Khand. I was the recipient of an infinitely great boon. I am rid of pain and suffering. I got absorbed in the bliss of Shabad more and more intensely. Karmas of innumerable births were eradicated. Kal's debt was nicely paid off. I bowed my head at the feet of Radhaswami, Lord of the Soul. I enshrined the form of Radhaswami in my heart. Giving up evil propensities, I brought my mind round. I held fast to Nam and discarded passion and desires or calm. I have firmly imbibed compassion patience and forgiveness. I made my mind soar high like a bird. I am now firmly attached to the feet of Radhaswami. Mystic verses on ascension, selected from the Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry of Swamiji Maharaj of Agra, India, Sarbachan, Volume 1. Mystic Ham 52 from the Padavali of Maharishi Mehi Paramahans. O traveler, seek the path that lies within you. Seek the path that lies within you. You and your beloved are in the same body. Your beloved is pervading everywhere, but not being perceived. Those initiated by the Master are able to recognize him within their bodies. O oh, traveler, if you wish to go alone on the path of the Lord, look for the path within and do not delay. The four spheres of darkness, light, sound, and soundlessness, they all lie within the fort of your body. You step down to the darkness, but your beloved is in the sphere of soundlessness. Now you again go back to the sphere of soundlessness through the tenth door, pursuing the inner light and practicing the yoga of sound. Listen to the orchestration of sounds and closely watch the dazzling light and go along the path where the five sounds resonate. 
mount up as you get drawn towards them. Never think there are other means of going to the sphere of soundlessness. Without the yoga of vision and the yoga of sound. May he says that going along this lone path is the secret path to divinity as revealed by all the saints. Catching the most subtle sound amidst different sounds, go along the solitary path lying within your body. Padavali 52 from Maharishi Mehi Parmahans. Meditation talk by Baba Ram Singh from January 13th, 2015. The saints are instructed by the Almighty to fetch the troubled souls. Here we return to the theme of divine grace doing most of the heavy lifting on this journey of ascension. Baba Ram Singh. Saints have always been sent for all times to the world by the Almighty because the Almighty has promised the souls who have left him and gone into the world of Kal, the world of time, that if they are in trouble or if they remember him, he shall come to fetch them. The souls which are in such Khand, or the plains above, are immortal and they do not come to the plains below, and therefore the Almighty instructs the souls which are in the plains below to go and help other souls, and these souls manifest or incarnate and come into this world to help other souls. These are souls which have ascended beyond Par Brahm and up to Banwar Gufa, who are instructed by the Almighty to go to the plains below and come into this world and help others. These souls who are instructed by the Almighty have already ascended to higher planes. They already have the inclination and the tendency and the devotion already imbibed in them. And when they come into this world, they are already ready. And then they get a living master. And then they get a living master in this world. They immediately rise above and follow the teachings very quickly. So the souls who are initiated here, after they follow the teachings of the Master, they rise above, and then they go into the Satch Khand Sat Lok, and they stay there. Those souls cannot be sent into the world. And likewise, the Almighty always instructs only the attained souls who have a causal body, who are in the lower plains of Par Brahm and Banwar Gufa, to come down into the physical world and help the other souls. Such attained souls, the saints, have gone to Sach Khand, and they have the darshan or vision of God Almighty through their meditation, but still possess a causal body and therefore can come to this physical body easily. Just pausing here, this is an interesting uh, glimpse into something we haven't seen before described in the literature of Santmat, that only those masters who have, you know, those souls that have attained such Khan but still retain a causal body are the ones that can incarnate into a physical body and they are the ones chosen to come here <laughs> if they've held on to their causal body. Uh, in the inner realms. That's an interesting definition of why certain souls become satgurus or masters in the world as opposed to other souls that remain in Sach Khand for all eternity and don't leave again. Baba Ram Singh. The following narrative is derived from the Anurag Sagar. Sukrit incarnates into the world as Dani Dharamdas and is deluded by Kal in the ocean of this world. Sat Purush, the Supreme Being, then instructs Gyani to return to the world as Kabir 
to liberate him, Dharam Das would become the first of many spiritual successors of Kabir for the purpose of liberating many souls during this Kali Yuga age, this epoch of time known as Kali Yuga. That's a description of what we're about to hear based on the teachings of the Anurag Sagar. Baba Ram Singh Yogja, who was seated above Parbram, was instructed by the Almighty to come and help Sukrit. Sukrit was the soul who was instructed by the Almighty to go into the world and help others. But Sukrit, when he came into the world, unfortunately got deluded by Kal and got dispersed in worldly thoughts. And then the Almighty had to send Yogjit to bring him back to the path, to bring him back on the path. And Yogjit came and helped Sukrit to gain and rise above and go back. He took four lives to help the soul go to the higher planes. So Yogjit took birth in four bodies, and in all the four bodies he was helping Sukrit to rise above and go to the Almighty. In the fourth life, Sukrit was finally incarnated as Dharam Das, and Yogjit was incarnated as Kabir Sahib. In this life, Kabir Sahib initiated Dharam Das and helped him to realize his true self. So, through these souls, or rather, though these souls have all the necessary qualities, when they come to the world, sometimes it happens that some of them get deluded by call and dissipated or lost in worldly thoughts, and they forget the purpose for which they have come. So, after the saints leave the body, for all their initiates, they continue to stay in the Brahm, which is the causal plane, and they continue to help the other souls from there. Saints stay in Brahm until each and every soul initiated by them is taken back to the Almighty. After all their initiates have been taken to Sat Lok, the eternal true spiritual region, they go and settle within the Sach Khand and Sat Lok. Sat Lok, Sach Khand is an eternal world. Once the soul goes there, it gets eternal life and continues to stay there forever. And from there, with the grace of the Almighty, it goes further up into three planes, which are Alak, Agem, and Anami. This is the way of creation. So those who have got the Satguru and have been initiated, their cycle of life and death is over. They will finally and eventually reside in Sat Lok. So we should value the importance of our soul and value the importance of the initiation given by the Master and their teachings and without fail continue to practice the teachings every day doing Dion, Bhajan and Simran a spiritual discourse by Baba Ram Singh the saints are instructed by the Almighty to fetch the troubled souls pretty fascinating isn't it you know these masters that have reached the, the highest spiritual plane but have retained their causal body, you know, have an ability to come back, to incarnate into the physical plane. And so they are the ones tasked to initiate souls in the world, to reveal to them the way of ascension, the way of inner light and sound. From the Glossary Simran Repetition of names or thoughts In Sant Mat, the Simran of worldly thoughts is controlled through the Simran of the five charged names names of God repeated by an initiate throughout the day and when sitting for meditation 
as a means of collecting the thought currents at the third eye center. The sacred names are also used as a password of sorts to higher planes, as well as for the purpose of protection from the negative power influences, the influences of Kal Naringen, the negative power. Dion, or meditation, as a state of penetratingly focused attention, with Simran and Bhajan, the means to dispel the illusion of Maya and Kal. And Bhajan, defined, Bhajan, devotional practice of listening to the inner sound current. So Baba Ram Singh is saying, do these practices every day. So we should value the importance of our soul and value the importance of the initiation given by the Master and their teachings, the teachings of the Masters. And without fail, continue to practice the teachings every day. Do bhajan, dhyan, and simran. And just pausing, uh, just to go back to that discourse of Baba Ram Singh, you know, you, if a great soul like Sant Dharam Das in past lives had already been introduced to the path of Santma, the path of spirituality, and still in that fourth incarnation kind of lost himself again, lost his bearings, and needed to meet Kabir and to be brought to awakening again. Wow, what a world of delusion and illusion we inhabit. That even great souls who become great masters <laughs> of Kali Yuga, you know, even they need help from a great soul like Kabir to overcome the illusion that puts us to sleep here in the physical realm, Pindadesh, the unreal realm of illusion and delusion. You know, a place of spiritual slumber. Even advanced souls have trouble waking up and need a lot of divine grace and intervention to make that happen. Amazing. Back to the Anurag Sagar, Kabir's Ocean of Love. Asked Sant Dharam Das, which souls should I initiate? Which souls should I initiate? O competent one, tell me this, giving their signs. Signs of the Jiva souls destined for Nam initiation. Sat Guru Kabir said, O Dharam Das, don't worry. Give the message of liberation to the souls. Those whom you find to be humble and devoted, tell them about the devotion of liberation. Dharam Das, give Nam initiation to him who has compassion, continence, and forgiveness within him. Tell him the message of Sat Purush to remain firm in the contemplation of Nam day and night. That was Guru Kabir's instruction to Sant Dharam Das about who to initiate during this Kali Yuga age, who uh, should be initiated. I'm going to repeat that final verse final paragraph from Baba Ram Singh, the saints are instructed by the Almighty to fetch the troubled souls. So we should value the importance of our soul and value the importance of the initiation given by the Master and their teachings, and without fail continue to practice the teachings every day. Do Dion, Bhajan, and Simran. Wrapping up today's Sant Mat Satsang podcast, I return to George Arnsby Jones and the inner journey of the soul back to its origin. George 
George Arnsby Jones. As the aspirant rises into the higher realms of life, he discovers that this is indeed the only true freedom to which a human being can aspire. It is the freedom from bondage to his lower self, the fears, fantasies, hatreds, preferences, and dreams which haunt him as he walks along the road, the long road of reoccurring births and deaths. Man individually and collectively can never be truly free on this physical plane of existence. Only the individual who has attained higher spiritual consciousness, fulfilling his birthright, has attained freedom in the most complete sense of the word. <laughs>